that's meant soccer team since he passed away, if you have words. We now ask you to join us in a moment of silence to honor the most decorated coach in program history, Steve Negoletko. Please remain standing as we honor America on this Thursday evening for our national anthem. Here to perform the Star Spangled Banner, USF sophomore Sasha Zemecha. Good evening and welcome to Negoesco Stadium at the heart of the University of San Francisco here. My name is Charles Wolin alongside my broadcast partner, Joe Dugan, in what would be the 94th birthday of Steve Negoesco. Sorry about that, folks. I do apologize. Charles Wolin here with Joe Dugan at Negoesco Stadium. And what would have been the 94th birthday of the legendary coach, Coach Steve Negoesco, and the beginning of a new era of San Francisco Don soccer on the men's side, the six-time national champions taking on local rival San Jose State. Both sides really haven't had the best run of form as of late. San Jose State 0-4 will give you their starting 11. It's a 4-2-3-1. David Sweeney, the goalkeeper, the captain on the day. Omar Limus, Jeff Dukes, Casper Polsgaard, and Finley Wood across the back line. The two sitters in front of them, Max Allen and Carlos Gomez Zavala. The three in front of them, Eduardo Benfil, Danny Sanchez, and in the attacking midfield position, Nicholas Brenes, who spent his time with San Francisco City FC at Kizar Stadium, just down the road from here. And up top is Suleiman Karami. Both Karami and Brenes pose quite a good attacking threat, so we were told by the assistant coach Jesus Sanchez in the pre-match chat with the coaches that we normally do. For San Francisco, first-year head coach Leonard Griffin leads his side to the first home match. Jake Serpa at right back. Ruben Stiver, of course, the goalkeeper and captain. Nathan Simeon and Easton Harriman, the two center backs. And at left back, Taiki Kajitani, a whole new back line for San Francisco. It's a familiar midfield three, though. Cameron Martin 
Ashish Chada and Zion Andrade today for the Dons. On the right side, Jaden Simmons. On the left side, Jonah Vanderwerth. And through the middle is Hokun Usa. And those two gentlemen new to the San Francisco side as well, looking to actually score a goal. San Francisco has been shut out in their first three games thus far. But San Jose State, they are 0-4 as well. They lost to also a West Coast Conference rival in midweek St. Mary's. But for both of these two teams tonight, Joe Dugan, a, a win would kind of put the wind into the sails, wouldn't you say? Well, uh, uh, my prediction, my bold prediction for this evening is one team's going to win. Or I should say, come away with their first win of the season. Yes, both teams need to get some result out of this in order for the confidence to go up. Both teams looking to improve their confidence. Any, conf confidence. Anytime you lose two, three, four in a row, as these teams have done, people, coaches, players all start to question. So a result here for either team is going to really boost them more than a normal victory. Here is Vanderwerth on the left side. A couple of step overs gets to the end line. Vanderwerth crosses it in and looks like it just passed the end line here. A totally new look San Francisco dons under Leonard Griffin, the new men's soccer coach here. He was installed in the late springtime. Eddie Soto left the program, went down south. Lots of good accolades for him, but it is a new time for San Francisco soccer and time to move on. It is, and you mentioned earlier, there's six new starters for USF out here tonight. Leonard Griffin and the Dons are trying to find their way, find what works best in terms of the lineup and the formation. Jaden played earlier in the season in the central midfield. Now he's playing out on the right wing. He's a dynamic player, very subtle on the ball, bound to help them anywhere he plays. But again, trying to find this niche, where does he fit best for the team? A corner here in this early going. San Francisco on the front foot, knocking on the door here. Going to be taken by Ashish Chada. He missed the first couple of games with mononucleosis, also known just as mono. It's a obviously <laughs> gnarly, gnarly little bug that puts you out for a month or more. And it's great to have him back. He's a type of player who can really affect the game, particularly in the final third, the offensive third for the Dons. Here comes San Jose State on the break. And it's Danny Sanchez who's just tackled at the last minute. I actually thought he lost his step there on that. Here's Andrade who came into this team last year and had a bunch of injuries and really never really got going. But now he's going to be asked to play a big role for the San Francisco side. Certainly one of the best recruits they've ever had in program history. And, and quite a different role, I might add. Zion was playing in the deep central midfield position last year, more of a holding midfielder. Now he's playing that uh, position, as they call the number number 10, just below the, the highest forward. More dynamic, more offensive role. So I'm excited to see him in this position. Switch of the field here for the San Jose State Spartans. They played St. Mary's on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. And they scored the first two goals of that game as well, only to be thumped in the second half. Five goals to nil by the West Coast Conference champion St. Mary's, who only lost, by the way, in penalties against Stanford in the NCAA tournament, basically saying they had an undefeated season. Right. In regulation, they did. But I might add that San Jose State was up 2-0 with 30 minutes left, only to lose that match two to five. Here is Cameron Martin, had a bunch of injuries last year as well. Onwards here for San Jose State. And tackled by Harriman, both the center back pairing tonight for San Francisco, both freshmen. Five freshmen in the side this evening. And a foul there by Vanderworth and a free kick here for San Jose State going to be taken by the captain Max Allen and as you've mentioned Charles a couple times already lots of changes for USF one of which you just mentioned Nathan Simeon who uh, is a freshman but also 
in one of his first games of the season. I think he missed the first two at least. And so he's just been inserted into the lineup. Again, getting to know his teammates, getting to know how Leonard Griffin wants this Dons team to play. The overall series record between these two teams, 47 wins for San Francisco. 19 for San Jose State, and there have been four ties. Last year, San Jose State actually thumped San Francisco four goals to one in San Jose. Here's Andrade, long run out of the back, and the goalkeeper has to be off his line, Sweeney, and does. And I, I was at that game in San Jose last year, and I spoke to Simon Tobin, the head coach, uh, during the summer, a good friend of mine, and he mentioned that that was one game where they he felt they really put it together. And I'll tell you, that game, they were quite dynamic. Here is Nicholas Brennis. It's Brennis, and save made by Ruben Stiver. A giveaway by Cameron Martin, and Nicholas Brennis with a wonderful little shot here, weaving his way through top of the 18 onto his right foot. And that's what he does best, Nicholas Brennis, a very crafty, tricky player in central midfield. Fun player to watch. I got a chance to broadcast his games this summer. But Ruben Stiver, we'll talk about him most of the time all year, but he's been the most consistent San Francisco player USF for the last two years. really yeah. dodged a bullet there, like you said, Charles. They gave away a free shot at the 18. Here's Max Allen. He lays off here, and it's just to the outside of the post for Ed, uh, Danny Sanchez. And... Sanchez again and in San Jose State another opportunity beckoning 30 seconds within each other and this is undisciplined defense by the USF Dons USF Dons trying to build out on the left side of their the park only to lose possession and then good teams will go and penetrate those holes that they left on the right wing really caught USF sleeping there overall this is the 71st meeting between these two teams and to be honest, it's nice to have good program history between these two sides. When you played, Joe, during those times, you, you, you've said this before, but your games against San Jose State at the time, neck and neck every time. They were very good games. Um, it's been a long rival, rivalry that's gone back, as you said, 79 matches. Yeah, 71. Uh, 71 Cincinnati matches. 71, yeah. San Jose State has had some national powerhouse teams, particularly in the uh, 70s and 80s. So it's always something I enjoyed. I always enjoyed going down to Spartan Stadium when we used to play in Spartan Stadium. It was quite fun and um, always a highlight of the season. Throw in here for San Francisco. It's Hakuna Usa. He gets to the end line, the Norwegian, and he wins himself a throw. You know, we always used to take uh, one or two East Coast trips every year. Steve always wanted us to be exposed to the nation's top competition, but I loved local rivalries whether it was cal whether it was san jose state stanford so on and so forth i just love the local rivalries and i think that we have that again with all the quality in the bay area not everyone's in the same conference obviously but the more they can schedule each other um you know it keeps these rivalries these historic rivalries going andrade throwing the ball in and headed away Andrade gets it back, closely defended. It's a long shot here by Taiki Kanjitani, and it's wide. Well wide, I might add. Really, you want to hit the target. Went to the Stanford-UC Irvine game on Monday night, and what they do very, very well in positions like that is they just simply put the ball low, hard, and on target. And then from that, anything can happen. And sure enough, on Monday night, that's how Stanford scored. Bit of a melee, a little deflection in the first half, in a similar play to that. And that's how they won the game, 1-0. Here is Chada trying to make the tackle. Wins the ball off of Brennis. Both club teammates again at San Francisco City FC this last year. Here's Jonah Vanderwerth. Ball stolen away, perhaps one too many touches. Well, I, I might add that he beat two players, goes for the third, not really sure what he's thinking. Square ball in the middle of the field. He needs to release the ball and go forward. No room for that on uh, Leonard Griffin's teams. And just, Self, selfish play will not last long. And just 10 minutes into this match, and for folks that have been following us over, over the last number of years and have seen a, a, a San Francisco team kind of have a, have a clear identity, they're learning a new identity under, under Leonard Griffin. They're trying to play a certain way as well, a different way. And, uh, you know, there's, there wasn't a lot of holdover from 
from last year to, to this year, there's not as many starters even in the in the starting 11. Chada, Andrade, Cameron Martin, and obviously the goalkeeper Ruben, but a very different look San Francisco. It, it, it's it's refreshing and, and change is hard. Transition is hard as, as, you've, as we've seen in the first couple of matches as Usa tracks down the goalkeeper there, but a, definitely a different way of going about it. It's different, but like we said earlier, they're still trying to find their way. They're still trying to find the right lineup and the right combinations that can gel. Steve Niguesco always said to us, it takes 40 to 45 games to become a team. And he felt it took that long to really get to know everyone's strengths and weaknesses, habits, and so forth. And so it's early days yet for this USF Dons team. Here is Andrade, wonderful switch of the field to Jonah Van der Werth, top of the 18. It's Van der Werth. He wanted on his right foot, takes the shot deflected. And the same thing here for San Jose State, now in their sixth season under Simon Tobin, who joined San Jose State, the Spartans, after 27 years at CSU Bakersfield. Obviously, the Englishman. He's uh, one of the top 10 in victories among Division I coaches uh, and uh, pretty much a, a soccer football legend in, in this country. And trying to take San Jose State the next step, he's gotten to the championship game of the WAC every single year. And if they win that game, they're in the NCAA tournament. Here's the throw in for Andrade, punched away by David Sweeney. Andrade wins it back, top of the 18, wonderful play. Here's Zion Andrade back to his right foot well usf's putting a lot of pressure on the san jose state here they're refusing to get out of their offensive third really staying in there zion did a great thing he went into the box he wants to go deeper in the box anything can happen and fortunately he cut back he was trying to have a little bump pass to one of his teammates that didn't work out too well chata thrown in Looks like a push there, and, and back to Simon Tobin here. He he wants to take his team to the NCAA tournament, and, and that 17 and 18 championship game, they, they lost both of those finals. Heartbreaking not to get to the tournament, but you're seeing a little bit of change now in these San Jose State sides uh, under Tobin, and quite obviously with the 4-1 victory last year in San Jose State, uh, excuse me, at San Jose State um, for the Spartans. Uh, defeating San Francisco. Here's Cameron Martin, ball over the top. It's Usa, can he run it down? It's Usa, and the goalkeeper does a fantastic job. Sweeney to make the save. Here's Vanderverth. And a good cross, unfortunately for USF, no one there. Ashish Chata. And again, USF, excuse me, Charles, really possessing the ball, again, refusing to give away possession, and they're staying in their offensive half, which is really encouraging. Here's Simeon and Easton Harriman. Good work here by the back line of San Francisco, especially a young back line as well. Very young indeed, a sophomore, two freshmen, and a transfer in Taiki Kajitani from SF State. Here is Kajitani. San Francisco City College. Excuse me, San Francisco City College. Here's Vanderverth looking for Usa. And looks like the referee stops the play. Usa maybe with an infringement there. And the yellow card is given here. And you can see on this replay, it's a really good opportunity. I don't think he got all of that. Goalkeeper, in my opinion, got a little bit uh, lucky. Fair play to him. That's exactly what he meant to do, but I don't think that USF got the full knock on that ball. And you can see the cross coming in here. Maybe we can see the infringement that, uh, well, I think that that's going to be for another time. But if I can just comment on uh, Simon Tobin, the veteran coach for San Jose State. He's been coaching now for 32 years in college level. He knows how to, he knows that the college season is a long season. Here's Van der Werth on the left. Van der Werth, his cross, it's Zion Andrade, and it's the keeper, David Sweeney, there first. And David Sweeney did well. Even though that ball seemed to hang up there, you think giving, giving the goalkeeper plenty of time, he had a backup for it. So again, he did very well there. But just to finish my thought on Simon Tobin, a veteran coach knows the season is long. He's going to peak his team at the right time. And I think he's knocking on the door, obviously. I think he's going to be really, really uh, in the hunt again for that championship. 
and an NCAA playoff berth. Yeah, terrific coach and a well-coached side. They're primed to make a tournament very, very soon. I'm sure the sets of players are fighting very hard for that and will do. It's Suleiman Karami. Obviously, their, their non-conference record doesn't reflect it yet, and neither does San Francisco's. But uh, good coaches in place uh, on both sides. Speaking of coaches, and, and back to Steve Negoesco this evening. It would have been his 94th birthday. He was your coach and... Just what an absolute legend to San Francisco, to San Francisco soccer. His teams were worldly teams, global teams, teams that had a makeup of players from Scandinavia, from Africa, from South America, and, of course, from from this area and local players as well. And at his funeral, his predecessor, Eric, excuse me, his... his um, his assistant coach who took over after him, Eric Visser, and this successor? stays with me, his successor stays with me. He said, I think that a lot of teams in our world should look a lot more like this, and that's something important to know, and he was your coach, and he's a special person, a special guy, and there was a moment of silence, but, um, uh, you know, owed to him and sending him good vibes wherever he is. Absolutely. And one thing that Steve maybe doesn't get a lot of credit for. Yes, Steve got a tremendous amount of credit. He won six national championships, including a playing championship himself when he was a undergrad here at USF. But he doesn't get enough credit, in my opinion, for being a great manager of people. Um, like I said, he won five national championships as a coach. And he gets a lot of credit for that. But the keys to his championships and his success were molding teams together like you said from around the world it was the united nations you know back in the 60s and 70s and 80s he had americans he had africans he had norwegians a lot of different scandinavians he had irish he had english i mean uh colleges around the country uh looked up to steve one of my favorite stories to tell if i can tell it real quick here during a slow moment of the game is we were at a stanford tournament and Univ university of virginia was there which went on to win the national championship that year and Bruce, uh, excuse me, um, uh, uh, Bruce, Bruce Arena, Arena, excuse me, was the uh, coach. And every coach got to say a few words at the pre-tournament dinner. And Bruce Arena stood up and if anybody knows Bruce Arena, he doesn't really mix words, which I like. <laughs> um, and he just said simply, we are here uh, because of Steve Nagoesco and the University of San Francisco, and we want to be a college that's known to play like USF. And to me, that was one of the biggest compliments that you could have. Like I said, uh, not only did they win the national championship that year, they won se several more in later years, and obviously Bruce Arena went on to uh, national team, some would say success, um, and a lot, a lot of MLS success. On that team were several national team, future national team players like Jeff Egos, Tony Miola, and others. Well, thank you for that, Joe. And Steve Negoesco, the legend lives on in, in our hearts and our minds and on this field and uh, in a lot of San Francisco soccer people's minds and as well. As kids are here today, as children were honored pre-game Nil-nil the score here, 20 minutes in. Charles Wolin and Joe Dugan with you here on the WCC Network. Between two sides looking for a victory tonight. Here is Nicholas Brennis. And now the captain, Max Allen, ball over the top. He's looking for Eduardo Benfil, who already has a goal to his name this year. And I really like that ball from, you said, the San Jose State captain. Uh, on a grass field, that stays in bounds. That's Max Allen. Fantastic strike of the ball, but on this turf, it's not going to hold up. In other words, it's just too fast. Here's Danny Sanchez. Can he make something of it? San Jose State winning the ball up high again here with their press. This is Carlos Gomez Zavala. Keeping possession nicely now. The Spartans begin to build out of the back. And they'll use Casper Polsgar. Back to the goalkeeper, Sweeney. Sweeney is just a freshman. Starting in goal from Morgan Hill. 
from Sobrato High School. And he's looked pretty confident back there. Had to come out early and collect. And so is Nathan Simeon as well, stamping out tackles left and right here. In this back line, it's Nicholas Brennis. He lays off. Cameron Martin's able to win back the tackle. Shot comes in, takes a deflection, and Ruben Steiner there. And those are dangerous balls and good opportunities for San Francisco State. You see it taking a deflection. That could have easily gone the other way, but fortunately for Ruben Steiner, he was diving that way, and the ball came right to him. But USF needs to do a better job of closing down those areas where San Jose State has gotten two, three shots off right in the center of the goal at about 18 yards out. That's a very, very dangerous uh, opportunity for San Jose State to score some goals. Poles guard over the top there of Usa. Hakun Usa. And again, it is Nathan Simeon. I'd like to have a, 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 some statistics on how many tackles he's already broken up. He's been really good back there so far. And well, he's had to he's had to come out come off of that 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 line where he's supposed to be back there holding the line and he's come off that line quite quickly yeah. and the central midfield not doing the job of being able to make that tackle before it gets to him and he's he's been odds on every time yeah Leonard, my initial observation yeah yeah you're absolutely right Leonard Griffin is very high on him um, as soon as Leonard Griffin got hired I believe in uh, April he went to work he went right on the recruiting trail and this is one of the recruits that he picked up out of uh, Florida I believe the the um, Academy there in uh, Florida IMG Academy nope um, I'm sorry I'm... but anyway great pickup again only his second game for the uh, Dons the Orlando City Soccer Club Academy but Mount Verde, excuse from... me, Mount Verde Academy is the one I was thinking of. And they have recently par partnered with the Orlando City um, Academy. Really, really well-known academy that's attracted players from around the globe. Free kick here for San Jose State. Nil, nil, your score here on... The WCC Networks, two teams really very much in need of a victory this evening. And that's an understatement. <laughs> yes, yeah, San Jose State 0-4, scored a few goals but haven't gotten a result just yet. San Francisco results have not come their way and they've been kind of large defeats. Not kind of, but they have been. And... They want to be able to rectify that. Both teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. 26 minutes in, first corner for San Jose State. And I would say the first 20 minutes was pretty much dominated by USF. Now there's been a swing in momentum. You see San Jose State now earning a corner kick for a very dangerous goal-scoring opportunity. Let's see what they can do with it. Swerved in, and there is Simeon. Top of the area, collected here, though, by Carlos Gomez Zavala. And again, Ruben Steiver right off of his line. You know, both goalkeepers haven't had to do crazy too much already, but they've they've just been sturdy and they've gotten their touches in. Max Allen hitting a fantastic corner for San Jose State. Well driven, ended up exactly where you want it to end up, about the 12-yard mark away from goal, keeping the goalie out of that play, yet no one there at the end of it for San Jose State. Here is Jake Serpa. Jaden Simmons helps him. Ball popped up into the air here off of clearance by Stiver. San Francisco looking to clear their lines, get out of the back again. You know, both teams are going to be pushing for a goal here before, before halftime. Plenty of time left, but uh, no one wants to go in to halftime. Coming from the situation both of these teams are in without a goal going into halftime. Now you can see Georgie Ruiz coming in for USF. Georgie Ruiz is a, a senior 
uh, forward from San Jose, uh, Southern California who's scored, scored some big goals over the years here at USF for the Dons. And Leonard Griffin wants more out of Georgie Ruiz. We, we chatted about it a little bit before the season started. He said, I just want a little bit more out of him. We gotta get him in good position to be able to be successful here. And here's to Georgie Ruiz. And some of the goals that he scored have been absolutely ginormous for this side. <laughs> you are correct. Here's Chada swerved in. The goalkeeper comes out. Georgie Ruiz. Andrade trying to track it down. And then cleared away. Substitution as well here for San Jose State. Rather, I got my bearings wrong on that. Just the one substitution. And the little lull here, you know, that, that's exactly why coaches substitute, bring a little life, new blood into the lineup, into the uh, momentum of the game. Let's see if this substitution for USF can, can do just that, but so far it has not. Here is Chada, and now Jaden Simmons stolen away again. Max Allen with a terrific fine ball here. It's Danny Sanchez, excuse me, Eduardo Benfield once more, and corner for San Jose State. You can see on this counterattack San Jose State is very very dangerous they use the width and the speed that they have on the width to get in front of goal very quickly very dangerous for USF crossed on in and again Nathan Simeon off of the corner first post Chada to clear and does a little bit of space, a little bit of room here for San Jose State to grow out of the back of San Francisco. Continues to press. Vanderwerf, the substitute. Georgie Ruiz on as the striker. Different role for him. Was played at a right back, left back, right mid, left mid under Eddie Soto. That's a fantastic ball by Jaden Simmons. Look at the build up here. Cameron Martin, can he corral the ball? And then all the way back to the goalkeeper, Sweeney. The flick by Jaden Simmons there. Signs of brilliance. Referee says play on. Again, the tackle by Simeon. Almost like I'm saying it every time. Feel like I'm a parrot. Well, that was a very clean tackle, and I'm glad the referee did not call anything because there certainly, in my opinion, was no foul. Here's Georgie Ruiz. It's a sheesh shot up. Georgie Ruiz makes an impact and plays the ball into the feet of Ashish Chada. San Francisco won, San Jose State nil. The first goal for San Francisco. Delight for Leonard Griffin. A new era for San Francisco soccer is off the dock. <laughs> and it's uh, thrilling for Ashish Chada to score a goal in front of his father here at USF. Well-deserved goal and great to have Ashish back in the lineup for the Dons. He's an exciting player. player. Anytime you uh, have a soccer match, you want talented players to be in the match, and he's certainly one of the most talented players out here on the pitch tonight. Here is Suleiman Karami. It's Nicholas Brennis. The immediate response here, Karami, and cleared away by Kajitani for San Francisco. Charles, you are right. That was an immediate response by San Jose, and as a coach, that's exactly what you want. USF, again, needs to tighten up the defense, be more disciplined, and a little bit more patient in the back. Well, here is Hakun Usa, the Norwegian, onto his right foot. Oh, it's just behind Georgie Ruiz, but it's Jake Serpa! And it's high. You can see the cross here coming in, 
And then you can see, is it Georgie Ruiz? Dummies it. And then Jake Serpa, unfortunately, far from the target. But his first instinct was to shoot, and that was the right decision to make. We can always find a positive out of it, can't we, Charles? Absolutely. Well, San Francisco with their first goal of the season. With that goal, they've conceded 15 goals in their first three matches. And so this is a, a big step. Small I know you've step. got I know you got, got a smile on your face, but this is a step. It's a small step, and the season, like I mentioned, is a long season, so you yeah. want to take these small steps, you want to take these baby steps and build up a foundation because to, over, it's not going to happen overnight. Like we mentioned several times, there's so many new players. It's a new system. Um, you know, it's going to take a little time. They just have to be patient. By the way, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous evening in San Francisco tonight. From wherever you are, most of you probably tuning in from Northern California, there's no fog and there's no wind. And you can see this press wor really working for USF. San Jose State struggling when they're pressed to play out of the back. Here they are again trying to play out of the back, okay. USF's not going to press on this immediate ball. But in general, they are not letting San Jose State out of the half, and I think that's a good strategy for USF. San Jose State thus far, without a long ball, has not been able to break any lines. 72 degrees here, just to give you some perspective at Negoesco Stadium. So the wind, not a factor. Here comes San Jose State. It's Nicholas Brennis. Again, top of the area. Always seems to go through his feet. Benfiel, Sanchez, Suleiman Kurami. They're trying to combine those four up top, and they've come close a couple of times. They've, they've asked the questions of Steiver, and so far unsuccessful but you can see the pieces there and see what they're trying to do yeah but you see usf diving in 40 yards away from goal that's where they need to be more patient you don't try to win a tackle there as the last man you try to contain and this is some you know that's a freshman mistake and that's something they're going to learn over time but if they do that too often i imagine there's going to be changes in the back Here is Karami, again, a goal to his name. Speaking with, again, assistant coach. Jesus Sanchez said he's one of the ones to watch. They had a good week of training, but a short week of training as well. Here's Cameron Martin. Is there more here for San Francisco? Cameron Martin, Georgie Ruiz deflected. Save made by Sweeney, out for a corner. And that was a really, really good reaction save by Sweeney because his momentum off the original shot, as you can see coming up here, was going to his right, the, the, our view for the viewer's left, and then a deflection takes it back to the goalkeeper's left or our right, and nice save, USF wins a corner. Cheyenne Charlagi now in the game here for San Francisco. Played with the San Francisco Glens, a rival of San Francisco City in USL League Two over the summer. Headed on by Kajitani. Georgie Ruiz comes out, goalkeeper comes out, shouts potentially a penalty that the goalkeeper may be impeded. Ruiz there will take a look at it and throw in here for San Francisco. But those are two good back-to-back -back saves by Sweeney. Incredible, really, really good. Not only did he make the first save, he went down, he got back up and made the second save. Not, not an easy thing to do. Yeah, Sweeney, the freshman, stepping in to this goalkeeper position. And looking quite lively, good and experienced. But, but knowing how Leonard Griffin wants to play, you know, this isn't good enough. He wants them to keep this up-tempo up rhythm and style because I think this is well to their advantage. If they calm down and are too patient and are happy going back rather than forward, I think that suits San Jose State. All the way back to Ruben Steiva. And he's looking for Jaden Simmons there. And Nathan Simeon had to be jumping up on his toes there. He had two San Jose State players bearing down on him. And this is a wonderful play here by Danny Sanchez. Still Sanchez. Gomez Zavala 
And now Brennis, who's the playmaker of the San Jose State side, on for Max Allen. Onto his right side, overlapping run here by Omar Limus, and his cross closed down. And you can see uh, when Cheyenne Charlocki came in, Jaden Simmons moved over to the left. And uh, he's a player who can use the width, he can go forward, he can come in the middle. Really like that when they change things up a little bit, really keeping the defense on their heels. Here is Allen. Looked like he wanted to have that one off of the half volley for just a second here. And he dictates that pace, though, out of central midfield for the San Jose State side. It's Karami, and his cross again closed down by Kachitani. And Kachitani, for the most part, has been pretty steady back there. It's really his responsibility to keep him and Nathan in the center together and create that uh, lack of space for San Jose State. Just under around nine minutes and 10 seconds to go here. And by the way, just a shout out our statistics. Our statistics board are, is delayed this evening. Our PR folks on both sides want to let you know that. And so our statistics are delayed as well. Jamal Adam in the game here for San Jose State. Here's Brennis. And just to continue on the theme of trying to find the best combinations and solutions for the USF Dons, Cheyenne Charlagi coming in here as the, uh, the right wing is a defender by nature, and he started as center back in the first two games for USF. So again, new players, new positions, trying to find the niche. Trying to find the right formula as well, quite rightly so. Just his fourth game in charge of the San Francisco Dons, Leonard Griffin, comes the way of the University of Portland. And then before that, St. Mary's and the University of California, Berkeley. He's got plenty of experience play, excuse me, coaching out west here. And a couple of stops in the Bay Area already included. Now his first head coaching job Leonard Griffin calm well poised as well you can see him kind of patrolling the sideline but always when we chat with him when we interview him he's always very zen tranquil and he's very quietly confident and you can see that in him it's nice to see that in a coach very different than what you usually see on a sideline well trust me I, <laughs> no one wants to win more than Leonard um, yes, he's going to take um, the right approach to putting these teams together, but no one wants to win more than Leonard Griffin. He was a winner as a player in college. He was a winner in the MLS. Um, he's done very well as an assistant in these different programs. So great hire by USF. Fantastic individual of high character. I look for great things ahead for USF with Leonard Griffin at the helm. Ball over the top here, looking for Andrade. Can Georgie Ruiz get there? Yeah, he can. Ruiz, Serpa. This is good work down the right side for Cheyenne Charlagi, and he's offside. Again, a little different position there for Cheyenne Charlagi, but uh, he'll get used to the runs he needs to make and find that space. You can see Leonard really asking his players to sit, you know, not always press high, but when they don't press high, clog the middle so they can't counter through the middle, rather than they can have a predictable long ball like this. Headed on by Kajitani. He's looking to find the feet of Jaden Simmons, and he's called for a foul. The bench erupts with a lot of vocals there. And again, San Jose State will march on here. All the way back to the goalkeeper, Sweeney. Hefty touch. How to get rid of it quickly. Here's Jaden Simmons again. And now Kajitani. Good work down the left side. And another free kick for San Jose State. Just five minutes and 25 seconds to go. 
Kachitani did very well to beat two or three players there, and he was looking for a short pass. Sometimes you just need to find the space behind the defense, especially in a position like this where there's less time left in the half. You just want to be safe going to halftime with that 1-0 lead. Cameron Martin, and now Georgie Ruiz into the feet of Martin. Throw in round central midfield for San Francisco. The 71st game between these two sides. 71. A lot of program history between the two. And this is, I, I think, what USF needs. They need to be a little bit more patient in their buildup. Yes, they want to go forward, but not go forward at any expense. And Ashish Chada might be booked here. And he is for the end of the half for the foul on Gomez Zavala. And I'm not sure if that was accumulation of fouls. What do you think, Charles? Yeah, no, I think, I think so. But also I think it's the, the descent with the flick of the, of the ball up into the air as well. Okay. And he's, st he's still going on about it. His, his hands are saying something to to his coach, Leonard Griffin. I think it's the descent, though. Well, he can't afford to uh, lose him, so he really needs to refocus and stay in this game. Yeah, we saw him sent off uh, once before last season. We did. For a, for a two-footed challenge. And now in his second year here, in San Francisco. You know, he, he's a very athletic, dynamic player, and he wants to be on the ball, and he's got a big personality. And you know what? That's good. And in his second season under Leonard, there's no one more equipped to be able to teach Ashish how to be able to be a professional footballer one day, which I know is his dream. And, and, and he can, he yeah. can absolutely do it. He has the skill. Like you said, maybe it's the little, uh, you know, mentality that could improve a little bit. But no, like you said, no one better than Leonard Griffin to show him those, so show him those trips. And tips. Ruiz on side, Andrade. He goes to ground. Shouts potentially of a penalty. Shouts potentially for a yellow card for a dive. All sorts of shouts around the stadium. What was it? Let's take a look at the replay here. We've got to see this one again. And again, here's the counter attack by San Jose State. Really really doing well again to get out to the width. Look how fast they're already in their offensive third. Here's Karami. Oh, I think that knee to knee potentially there. Except I don't think it's a penalty. Well, for me, did the defender play the ball? You can see here, Zion Andrade goes into the box. The defender, you have to admit, doesn't touch the ball. Controversial, but the game goes on. Well, there's no VAR here, Joe, so... Well, there's VAR up here. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, our word doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Throw in here, far side, San Francisco. 2.25 left on the clock here. Charlongi concedes a foul. And a restart with San Jose State. Down 1-0, San Francisco with their goal from Ashish Chada, courtesy of Georgie Ruiz. There's Jeff Dukes calling out his name, all of his teammates. You can hear the shouts of Dukes out of the back when he gets on the ball here. Now Max Allen, the captain, ball over the top. Settled by Simmons. Simmons had a good quiet game, spreading the ball here. Here's Cameron Martin. Yeah, Jaden Simmons, absolutely a gem for USF. He is so subtle on the ball, really, really calm. And that's exactly what they need as they try to become a more mature team. Andrade, end line, Georgie Ruiz. And it's blocked. Fantastic cross by Zion Andrade. Unfortunately, Georgie, Georgie Ruiz could not finish that. Couldn't get a strong enough shot off Brennis, with his left foot. Allen, and there's one minute here. Well, this game, no let up. 
by either side. San Francisco with the slim, slender goal lead. But they both had their chances. This one. Crossed on in, and no one's making the run in there in front of the goalkeeper. But that's really good disciplined defense by USF because they were not allowing for those runs behind the defensive line, which seemed to hold their, their line about the 18-yard the line, so giving Ruben Steiber a very, very easy save. Very, very disciplined again by USF. Just around 20 seconds to go here. The WCC Networks, Kajitani, Chada, Simmons. Just track it down. Well, a delightful first half in Coach Leonard Griffin's home debut at Negoesco Stadium. San Francisco with a quiet goal to nil lead at the break. Georgie Ruiz, the one, excuse me, two changes for Leonard Griffin in the first half. Georgie Ruiz sparking the life, laying off a lovely, lovely ball for Ashish Chada to finish. He roared to the crowd and San Francisco leads by a goal to nil here at home. Both teams would love to have a victory. San Jose State 0 and 4, San Francisco 0 and 3. This is the 71st meeting between these two sides. What history between the two programs on legendary coach Steve Negoesco's 94th birthday. Wherever he is, somewhere up in the spirits, sending positive vibes down towards the beautiful game in San Francisco. We'll be back with the first half highlights and the second half, and Joe Dugan will interview Leonard Griffin after this.
Welcome back to Negawesco Stadium. It is Charles Wolin here with you. Joe Dugan coming up with an interview in just a moment with Leonard Griffin. San Francisco with a goal to nil lead. Shot comes in from Ashish Chada. Yes! It's the second goal for San Francisco! Right off the offing, 15 seconds in. Ashish Chada to the double. San Francisco two, San Jose State nil. And as the ball was knocked down, Andrade goes to ground. And Chada hit that. It was a little awkward for the goalkeeper. But he gets it second on the evening. A huge goal for San Francisco. And as my partner Joe Dugan comes back up here on the gantry, the ball looked like it was swerved in, hit the face of Andrade, and then fell to the feet of Chada, and Chada just hit it, and a diamond in the rough. Absolutely superb goal. Fantastic way to start the second half. We were actually on the field, and they blew the whistle uh, to start the second half. Leonard Griffin only walking over to his sideline position now they don't even wait for the head coach these days well let's see if we can go to that interview with you and Leonard Griffin here as the yellow card comes back out to Jaden Simmons but let's have your interview with Leonard Griffin Or rather, we will uh, go ahead and wait for the interview with Leonard Griffin, and we'll carry on here. But the beginning of the second half, 15 seconds in, 15 seconds in, Ashish Chata with, with the second goal. We talked a little bit about him and his disciplinary record and given a yellow card and accumulation and et cetera, but the kid just wants to score goals and he, and he wants to play, and you can't knock any of his passion or any of the way he plays if he's knocking him into the back of the net. On the double, a brace for him tonight, and he's got a whole half to maybe complete a hat-trick this evening. Absolutely, he just wants to win. This is a very precarious position to be in. From this very position, Charles, men or women, we've seen so many early, game, uh, early goals, whether it's in the first half or second half. It's very, very precarious because I'm sure Leonard Griffin said to his team at halftime, keep up the up-tempo. Anytime you score a goal and now go up 2-0, kind of take your foot off the pedal a little bit. Let's, let's see if USF continues with Griffin's strategy. Here's Jonah van der Werf, and he's tripped up. And it's going to be a free kick for San Francisco. A little bit of breathing room here. And Leonard Griffin's home debut thus far, and San Francisco Don's home opener thus far has gone fairly well and you like to see Vanderverth really try to assert himself on the offense he hasn't done a whole lot was taken off before halftime so you'd like to see him come on strong like he was trying to get into the box there in the second half Chada looking for Kajitani headed away brought down here by Gomos, Gomez Zavala it's Ashish Chada he wants more and it's just wide of Sweeney's post and I like that shot He's thinking goals. He's not thinking I'm going to get my third goal. He's thinking I have an opportunity to score. Let's go for the shot. That's going to force the defense to step up to him next time. And you can rest assured Ashish, Ashish Shada would find a penetrating runner with a small pass through the next time around if the defense steps to him. Well, there's some high pressing from San Francisco leading to a throw in just in front of their bench. And now Hakun Usa. He's tripped up around the San Jose State. San Jose State's Finley Wood tripped up there. Here's Chada. And that's Max Allen, who played some lovely, lovely football in that first half. The senior from Liverpool. And he's wearing number eight, and he beckons to bring up, yes, yes, a Liverpool great, Stevie, Stevie, Stevie G, Stevie Gerrard, who 
was a terrific footballer. Now, of course, the head coach and manager at Rangers. But the way that he places balls, it reminds me a little bit of that, dictating the pace from central midfield. I had the chance to, to chat with some soccer-minded folks out in the in the crowd, and they were chatting about both sets of players and very much enjoyed the play of, of Max Allen spraying balls left and right, switching the, the field. Good change of pace, direction, and kind of being that metronome for his side. Here's Zion Andrade. Vanderwerth, left side, Jonah Vanderwerth, end line. USF clearly having the advantage here to start the second half. USF has to learn to take advantage of these opportunities and get behind the defense. Don't be happy with a, a throw in just because you're off in the offensive third. You really need to get those crosses over and get in these penetrating positions. Here's Jaden Simmons. Now Vanderverth. And high and wide. But a good start. Nice little bit of an attacking foray here in bunches for San Francisco to start the half. Yeah, very good uh, opportunities so far. They need to keep up this high tempo rhythm. They're gonna press on defense and they're gonna continue to go forward on offense. Again, it's all about consistency. Here's Serpa. And now Simmons. I think we've yet to see the best of Jaden Simmons. He is pacey, he is quick, he is technical, and he's a freshman as well. Yeah, I'm really Excuse curious. Excuse me, Reynolds. Yes, Jaden Reynolds. I'm really curious to see where he actually ends up uh, finding his comfort zone in terms of positions again he's played in the central midfield already this season now he's playing out right right or left wings which you know Leonard Griffin is very comfortable with him in playing any of these positions but uh, just curious to see where he ultimately ends up free kick for San Jose State and it looks like they made a change tactically here Finley Wood the starting left back is now playing as a number six a defensive midfield uh, player alongside Max Allen as well they've changed the the left back uh, uh, as well it is Jamal Adam at that left back position here is Max Allen yeah, I really like the style Max Allen plays he's very subtle he's not in a hurry, he's very confident with the ball and he can certainly ping a ball diagonally. Ball sent in over the top here and Nathan Simeon. And you just get a glimpse of Nathan Simeon's speed. Collected the ball on his foot in a very dangerous position, takes it out wide and clears it away. Serpa looking to make the tackle at the end line here and cleared away by Taiki Kajitani. Really undisciplined defense by USF. Bad mistake there, trying to go for it, win the tackle rather than just contain, keep him out of the box, almost giving up a goal. Now there it is, Angel Farias, the change here on the left side for San Jose State. And it looks like we have a, a Simon Tobin sighting on the sidelines he was feeling ill and don't believe he was able to start the match but he's here which is always a good good sight you know you always like to see the head coach able to coach his own team here is Casper Polsgaard the freshman from Vigile, Denmark. Seeing a lot of the ball now, San Jose State here in this last few minutes as they 
continue to build out of the back. And what a ball again from Max Allen and the offside flag is raised on Danny Sanchez. Wow, I don't know if we have a glimpse of that, but I'd love to see that replay. That looked like a fantastic through ball. And look at this ball again by Max Allen. And that's not the right angle to see it, but really from this angle, it didn't look like offsides. I thought that was a fantastic pass. Max Allen taking the ball so subtly in midfield, turning, not just going wide, but putting a through ball really caught USF defense on their heels. Very dangerous ball. Restart from San Francisco. Who's uh, looking for Jaden Reynolds? Referee stops play here. Maybe Usa over the back of another player. Usa already booked as as well as a as a target forward this evening. But you you, you kind of got to appreciate his um, intensity um, and uh, and aggressiveness. Is that another as, word for passion? Well. well, I mean, how many times do you see a center forward? my partner here, an analyst. How many times do you see a center forward 15 minutes into a game get a yellow card? Right. I mean, right. that's that's uh, that's a little different. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, elbowing people in the in the head and the face? I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying. Fighting for space, fighting yeah. for the ball. Here's Pole's guard. And now Max Allen. Good work this. Finley Wood, Pole's guard again, very much on the ball. And one thing I'm noticing right away is the, the compactness and the team discipline of the USF defense really moving together. And this is the moment in the game or the time in the game where USF is learning to manage the game. Learning when to press, when to go forward, and when to simply put your foot on the ball, go wide, control the pace of the game. A lot of time left here. But this press seems to really be getting to San Jose State. Not able to deal with it thus far. Sam Higgins now in the match, making his home debut. Came close so many times to scoring a goal for San Francisco here at home at the end of last season. I know he's had plenty of time to hone his skills under Leonard Griffin here. And I'm sure he'd love to have one this evening. Georgie Ruiz back in the game as well and I do apologize it's uh, Josh Redfield playing center back alongside Jeff Dukes currently not Casper Poles guard Cameron Martin receiving a really, really nice through ball. Unfortunately, was tackled quite well by San Jose State in midfield. Here goes the transition for San Jose State. Here is Karami and Suleiman Karami fouled. The senior from Dublin. Used to scoring goals. And that seemed to be a, a quite light foul. Didn't see much in it. Referee allowed play on for a moment. The advantage was taken away, and then he called the foul. Dangerous position here, especially with Allen on this. Max Allen on this. Looks like he'll be taking this with his left foot. As we've seen so far, he has a very, very wicked strike with his left foot. Look for him to bend this around the wall, hitting the, the far post. Now oh, there's five in the wall. Allen behind the ball on his left side, as well as Finley Wood. It is Max Allen, palmed over the bar by Ruben Stiver. Stays in play. This is Omar 
Lemus and cleared away. I'm not sure if we can see that free kick again, but really, really good free kick. Not only did he get it on target, he got a hard target. You can see this with a lot of power and dipping at the last moment. Rubenstiver have no other choice but to parry the ball away. San Francisco with a 2-0 lead here at Negawesco Stadium. Charles Wolin, Joe Dugan with you in the 71st edition between these two sides. We gotta think up a good name for a, for a rivalry between these two teams. Obviously, San Francisco and Santa Clara have a interconference rivalry, but these two teams have a history too in the offside flag on Georgie Ruiz. And even though that was offside, you like to see that diagonal run out of Georgie, Georgie Ruiz because there's so much space there. I like to see that more often. San Jose State being caught out in the back, really, really spread out. When they lose transition, when they lose the ball in transition, when they're trying to build out of the back, they're left exposed. Here's Lemus. This is Gomez Zavala. Referee blows his whistle. I think he's gonna have some words with Ashish Chada, who's already been booked this evening. Two goals for Ashish Chada and a booking. Yeah, Ashish really needs to focus in and play his role in the team in order to stay on this field, you know. It only takes just a little foul to get a second yellow, and then he's a red card. He's not only going to miss this game or the remainder of this game, but the next game. So he certainly can't have that. He's mature enough. He's a good enough player. He'll, I'm sure he'll stay in this game. Cleared away by Easton Harriman. Up and above into the correct center just behind us. The... Wonderful student gym and practice facility for USF Don's men's basketball. And you can see USF really forcing San Jose State to go all the way back. Not only are they forcing them to go back, but their team defending. You can see 11 men behind the ball. Here's Redfield, Allen, and good switch of play here. Headed on by Sanchez looking for Karami. And that's the turf for you, just taking an extra extraordinarily high bounce. Okay, so the interview that you had with Leonard is now on Twitter. So we do not have that interview to show what was going on. But regardless, that is online. So if folks want to head on to Don's Athletics on Twitter or USF Don's M Soccer. You can find that interview between you and Leonard Griffin. Well, Switch of the play here by Finley Wood. Leonard was excited, yeah. excited for that little interview, and uh, let's let's uh, take it as a good luck charm. On the field as the second half whistle blew, only to score a goal within 15 seconds. It's Suleiman Karami, and it's wide. Took a deflection though, and it's going to be a corner racing over to take this is Max Allen he has not stopped one moment the senior from Liverpool and you got a feel for him if you watch Max Allen anytime that you uh, San Francisco uh, excuse me San Jose State is trying to build out of the back he's constantly looking for the ball to his feet there he is great ball headed away by Van der Werth. but a lot of times San Jose State is bypassing him to his frustration on health now Left side, overlapping run, Sanchez, onto his right foot. He does really well. Good hold-up play here by Benfield. Restart for San Francisco. Again, last year's matchup, 4-1 in favor of San Jose State. And again, they've met 70 times before this. And San that was Francisco a, 47 wins, San Jose State 19 and four ties all together. 
And so, again, great football history between these two teams. Well, you know, I was just uh, had a thought, you know, speaking of uh, Stephen Iguesco and uh, his memorial services earlier, uh, or I should say this past year, um, many, many San Francisco, excuse me, San Jose State players and coaches uh, came to honor Steve and show their respects because they had such great rivalries back in the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Yellow card now coming out to Taiki Kajitani. And suddenly there's a few cards coming out and do you here from this referee. There's four players from San Francisco booked. Chata, Reynolds, Yusa and Kanjitani. And, and yes, I, I think they need to be much more disciplined, don't you? I think those these these cards or some of these cards are, are for either descent or kicking the ball away after the fact. And that's, you know, showing a, a lack of discipline. Here is Karami. He's been all over the place. Karami dipping in, playing as a winger, playing as a striker as well. He's only 5'5", Suleiman Karami, so he got a lot of work to do. And as a little person myself, I know how to run around, especially as a, as a striker <laughs> or as a winger. You got to make yourself useful somehow, and I'm all about it. And nothing to show yet for his work that he's been doing. But again, he comes out of that number nine, target forward, center forward spot, dips out, plays on the wings at times, and the good movement up front here. And San Jose State with their best chances, I would say, Joe, in the first 15 minutes of, of, of this game, back to back from, from Brennis and from the winger, Danny Sanchez, who's really popped up in and around in that, that front four. But uh, again, nothing yet, just yet, to show uh, even though Ben Feel and Karami have goals to their name uh, this season for San Jose State. Yeah, and I think if you ask both coaches, this tempo is not good enough for them. It's mm. not It's not fast enough. Here is Sam Higgins. It's a ball that swerved in and comes off of a San Jose State defender. Corner, San Francisco. Let's see if they can get something out of this. They haven't been too successful thus far on the corner kicks or set pieces. Well, that was driven in from, and a good whip to it from Sam Higgins. Taken by Andrade, out swinging, right footed. In there is Higgins. It comes to Taiki Kajitani, headed away, Georgie Ruiz and over the bar. <laughs> I like that attempt. It's showing some ambition and why not? It's times like this as a coach, you really want some players to, st to step up and, and, sh and insert themselves more on the game. You know, you look for Zion uh, uh, Drati, one of the most skillful players out here. You look for Cam Martin for USF. Here is Van der Werth now on the left side. The senior still looking for his best moments. It's Kajitani. It's a nice cross. Palmed away. Wow. And the referee and fans asking for a card there. No, they were asking for a handball. The ball was, in my opinion, from my angle, was clearly yeah. handled. handled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, Referee, I mean, there is, the rule's pretty clear these days, isn't it, Charles? Yeah. Let's take a look at this. Comes off. Oh. And that plays to his, not only did it hit the hand clearly, yeah. but it plays to his advantage. In the old days, they used to have a little bit of a leeway, but these days, anything the hand, if I'm correct, Charles, in Yeah, NCAA, let's take a look. Here it is. Ooh, that's very close. I think it's no. still outside. No, it is. On his right. But right. he didn't call yeah. the infringement whatsoever. At the top of the area, yeah. I'm not asking for a penalty kick, I'm just simply call the handball. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I think there's, um, I'm not really one to grade referees. Uh, I think that uh, 
you know, there's other people you, that's, for that, that job. That's, that's other people for that job. <laughs> I'm not a referee assessor, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll let you analyze the referee. But uh, I think he can tell. I don't think he he wants to. Uh, he wants play to continue, so it does. Here's Max Allen, right side. And now Finley Wood. Oddly enough, Finley Wood from Wales in his second year. So the Welshman and the Englishman next to each other in central midfield. Allen and Finley Wood. Here is Karami. Finley Wood wins back the tackle, finds the feet of Allen, well taken here, back into the feet of Finley Wood. And he switches the play for Angel Farias. Yeah, for me, Max Allen has been the best player for San Jose State, uh, bar none. He's really composed on the ball. He's able to play, you know, with a high level of speed. Finding third and fourth teammates, not just the guy who gave it to him. And out comes Ruben Stiver. Another yellow card coming now, and it appears to be to Zion Andrade. So five San Francisco players booked in this game. And you can see the replay there. Take a look at it one more time. Andrade comes through. He just mistimes his tackle there, I think. And not, not the best tackle either. No, no, he's just got to move his feet. Again, stay behind the ball. Again, it's times like this that do not advantage the team with two goals up. It's allowing the, the opponent, San Jose State, to get back into this game and change the momentum. A little bit of a break here at Negoesco Stadium. San Francisco leading San Jose State by a score line of two goals to nil. My name is Charles Wolin, and my broadcast partner tonight, Joe Dugan, a USF alumnus. And San Jose State coming into this game 0-4 on the season in their non-conference schedule. But playing St. Mary's pretty tight, toe-to-toe -to -toe, earlier in the week. Losing five goals to two. Playing at Santa Clara, losing five goals to one. The first game of the season, they lost 2-0 to Sacramento State. And then their second game at Pacific, they lost 2-1 in overtime. San Francisco, some losses by larger margins. 05, excuse me, nil to five against Seattle. Nil to four against Washington and they lost 6 nothing to Cal State Northridge on Sunday. But here they are up 2-0. Both teams would love to get a victory today. Does it put wind in their sails? Here is Max Allen, the orchestrator of this San Jose State side, very much in the driver's seat. He'd like to kick his team on here. And nice work there by Finley Wood. Brought down by Zion Andrade. Flipped up into the air, looking for Serpa. Again, the 71st time these two sides have met. Last year's reverse fixture in San Jose. Four goals to one in favor of San Jose. Both teams trying to find their rhythm. Both teams trying to put consecutive passes together as they go forward. San Jose is 
putting passes together, but they're not yet able to break any lines and go forward. And a yellow card coming to Vanderwerth. And taking a look at this one again, ball coming down, Vanderwerth coming in top of his studs over the top. And the captain, Max Allen, asking the referee to send him off, but he's just given a yellow card here. And, you know, I'm sure Leonard Griffin's going to go back and look at this, and this is an area of big improvement for USF, this lack of discipline, no need to go for these 50-50 balls in this position of the field. Up 2-0. Just simply get behind the ball and contain the man. And how many cards did you say that USF has? Six now? Six now. Yeah, that's that's a lot of yellow cards. Now, Andrade does very well. Now Serpa, he opens up the field. The right side, Higgins, shoulder down. Here's Finley Wood. David Polson getting some action now for San Francisco on the left side. And now in the back line, Casper Polsgaard uh, back in the back line for San Jose State. Here is Omar Limus. Great save by Stiver. Headed up into the air and cleared away. Not sure how that really stayed out, to be fair with you. Me either. Here is Finley Wood. Overlapping run on that right, excuse me, that left side to Jamal Adam. Let's see this replay here. Ruben Steiger coming up big on his goal line to keep that ball out of the back of the net. Having a little trouble there with the replay, but. And here we go. Here's Gomez Zavala. Good build up this from San Jose State. A couple of tactical changes. It looks like they've gone to three in the back for now. And they're playing with two high wing backs as well. So Lemus is playing on the right side and Jamal Adams on the left. And they've gone to three in the back ish. But. It could change here with just around 15 minutes to go. 2-0 for San Francisco. San Jose State, they played well in this game, but they haven't had anything to show for it. San Francisco, they've been clinical, and they've been good tonight. And they've done what they've needed to do with this two-goal lead. But again, definitely a difference between the first half and, and the second. Here is Lemus. Chased down by Polson and a terrific, terrific defensive play by Easton Harriman, who comes back, slides on the ground to collect, and that's it. And I think that is a fantastic play, as you said, Charles, as we mentioned off the air at halftime, Easton Harriman and Nathan Simeon, Nathan Simeon uh, is playing fantastic. That Those two match up in the center, I think are gonna have a bright future. Cameron Martin. Great ball for Georgie Ruiz, and he can't stay with it. His first touch really let him down there.
can hear shouts from the crowd of San Jose State fans saying that's a yellow. Well, you know, it could be. This is a huge area for improvement for USF. Just some needless fouls in very dangerous areas of the field. This is only resulting in a goal scoring opportunity for San Jose State. Again, it is Max Allen and Finley Wood. Finley Wood on his right, Max Allen on his left. I would think Max Allen's going to have a go as we see here. It's Max Allen! And it is just to the outside of Ruben Stiver's left post. And Max Allen looks up into the sky and he says a few words to himself. But he's come close both times. And Well, I'd love to see this one in replay because I think this was extremely close. Look at that. Struck so, so well by that, Max Allen. Inches, inches away. And there's yeah. nothing Ruben Stiver could have done at it, about it. Yeah, I said he was a senior earlier. He's actually just a junior, so they'll have another good year of him. And and, and let's just let's just pause for a second. Him and, and Finley Wood together in central midfield is, has really catapulted San Jose State in terms of building out of the back. They've been a lot better being able to build. Here is Carlos Gomez Zavala and San Jose State winning a throw just in front of their bench. But with, back, mm -hmm. with Max Allen coming back so deep to collect the ball from the back, back line and trying to build the ball out of the back, there's not much in midfield left. So they're, they're going over the top or they're going out wide and they don't have much to show for it. In other words, they're not getting into the offensive third. As I say that, here they come with a corner. Broadcaster's curse. <laughs> well, a goal could do them very good right now. Would certainly liven up the game, wouldn't it? And San Francisco, two goals to the good. It's Max Allen's service. Oh, and rising to the occasion was Adam, Jamal Adam. And it's just why the sophomore from Santa Clara. Well, if this game remains as is, Ruben Stiver will love to be on the other side of a clean sheet. Here's Easton Harriman, Ruiz, and he's fouled. And San Francisco bench erupts, erupts with that one by the challenge. I think they have a fair criticism here. Why is that not a yellow, call, yellow card? You can see here. The nice through ball completely upended from behind, which all day is a yellow card in my book. Well, the foul there by Casper Polsgaard. Here is Chada. Looking for Cheyenne Charlaghi on the far side. Throw in here. for San Jose State. They got to get something going if they're gonna have a result in this game this evening. Just around 11 minutes to go exactly on the clock. Chested down by Georgie Ruiz, cleared away here. Finley Wood, Max Allen. Finley Wood looks up. Just under 10 minutes to go now. They get on with it here. Wonderful pass by Finley Wood. Omar Lemus. Overlapping run here. It's Isaiah De Dios. And he wins a corner. And you can see the striking power of San Jose State. When they counterattack, man, they are really well trained, well coached. They hit the width and go forward immediately. 
as soon as they can find that open wide player, they're quite successful in their counterattacks. Max Allen, his service. Rubensteiger gets a hand to it from the header by Dukes. Max Allen, left side. Excuse me, back onto his left. And now Lemus, he'll cross it in. Cleared away by Polson, whose sister, mind you, played just the other evening here last week. And she plays for UC Riverside. And David Polson's father was in town. And mother and father. Yeah, mother and father. And Joe Dugan and myself had the chance to chat with the Polson family, always here, always supporting their kids. And nice to see a brother-sister duo out west and having the chance to, to play at each other's stadium once a a in a while. And proud parents, and, and they should be. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the throw-in. Brought down by Max Allen. On here for Nicholas Brennis. Loves to run at defenders. Gomez Zavala on here for Jamal Adam. It's Jamal Adam! Well, he was taking that one all the way on his left foot, Jamal Adam. You could tell he wanted that one. And you could see this ball hit on a rope, but un unfortunately for San Jose State, well over the crossbar. Seven minutes and 30 seconds to go here at Negawesco Stadium. Cleared away by Serpa. Brought down by Ruiz, stolen by Max Allen. Time to run, space to run. Here he is, Max Allen, Lemus. Still Lemus looking for Max Allen. It's Adam, save made by Ruben Schneider. Well, what a build up by San Jose State. They carved through San Francisco like a knife through warm butter. And Ruben Stiver is there. And that's got to be frustrating for San Jose State. Yes, they are knocking on the door, but it's just maybe a little bit of luck on USF's part. Ball seems to go right to Ruben Stiver. And the goalkeeper Sweeney runs out as Higgins looking to get that first goal this season. Higgins the junior from Palos Verdes, California. Comes from a family with a very high soccer IQ as well. Chance for him in his junior and senior year to enjoy playing as a striker for the San Francisco Dons under Leonard Griffin. And tonight, it hasn't been easy in any stretch of the imagination for San Francisco, but they're five minutes and 50 seconds away from getting their first win, a, a much, much needed win here. And speaking to Leonard Griffin in the preseason about how the team looked and how players were coming into camp. He was really happy with Sam Higgins in terms of how hard he'd worked over the summer, how fit he came into camp. And I think it's earned him some playing time. Here's Nicholas Brennis. That is a wonderful ball over the top, but no one gets to it, and Ruben Stiver just does enough to get to it. But Ruben Stiver was positioned where he needed to be in order to get that ball high in his box. And he's the captain for a reason, Ruben Stiver. 85th minute here at Negoesco Stadium. Conjitani, Ruiz, not the best of first touches from Georgie. 
Eventually cleared away here. Brought down by Serpa. Higgins on his horse. On to his left side. It's Sam Higgins, space to Ron. Overlapping Ron, it's David Poulsen. Pulls it back. The crowd loved that, by the way. Really good idea by David Poulsen. Unfortunately, wasn't hit firm enough and didn't find the feet. Here's Sam Higgins. He's put in through by Cameron Martin. Crosses the ball, looking for Cheyenne Charlaghi. And a couple of pretty build-ups there by San Francisco. Well, you like to see those crosses across the face of the goal mouth. Really good goal-scoring opportunities. And we talked with Leonard Griffin about Sam Higgins as well, and that's something that he knows that he's going to work with Sam Higgins on is that movement, and that movement so sharp just there for that ball inside the six to, to swerve that, cross that from the left to the right. That's absolutely right. Movement off the ball causes a lot of chaos and confusion for defenses. Not only that, it creates space for the offense. Well, here's Finley Wood. San Jose State had a couple of chances, three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Throwing. It's Josh Redfield. He's played out of the back. Pretty sturdy tonight. The freshman from Oakland went to Bishop O'Dowd High School. Here's Cheyenne Charlaghi. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go. He's looking for Georgie Ruiz. Yes! Georgie Ruiz. The third goal for San Francisco. Georgie Ruiz, who's worked hard all night, hasn't had the best of touches. He had an assist earlier for the first goal, and he caps the evening off with the third for San Francisco. San Francisco three, San Jose State nil. Looks like maybe a mis misplayed ball by Easton, excuse me, by uh, Casper Polisgard for San Jose State allowing the ball to get through to Georgie Ruiz to finish it off so nicely. See Cheyenne Charlaghi going down the line there, getting the ball across as he is trained to do. Well, at first I, I thought that it was a very lazy cross and I thought he was going to run to the corner flag. But hey, that'll do. That'll do just fine. It, it will. And you like to see Georgie Ruiz putting those balls away. That's something that he is great at is just being in the right place at the right time. As we've seen over the years from him, he makes, uh, he puts some Balls away in some big games. Well, he is a senior this season. And that's going to put a smile on his face with his team up 3-0. As San Jose State pushing for a goal. A little bit of icing on the cupcake. Not the cake, the cupcake for Leonard Griffin tonight. A mini cupcake. Very mini cupcake. Small steps. Yeah. Small steps. There you go. And, and Leonard will be the first one to say that they can do better. They can improve the pace of the game. They can improve their discipline on these 50-50 challenges, which they come up short on. Too many yellow cards stopping the flow of the game. That is not in their advantage. Here's Casper Poles guard. Now Jeff Dukes. Brennis. Now Gomez Zavala. Max Allen. Once again, finding the open man, switching the play, all starting with Max Allen. Omar Lemus. Just about a minute and 15 seconds to go. San Jose State, they worked hard tonight. They showed a lot of character, had some really nice build-ups. Ruben Stiver has been really odds-on, though, as, as the goalkeeper and captain of this San Francisco side. And he has been arguably the most consistent player over the last three years for San Francisco. His freshman year, 
They made the NCAA tournament last year where they had a really, really up and then down year. And then the beginning of this year, which has gotten off to a little stormy of a start. You would say there's stormy waters and some rockiness there, but... Just a storm in a teacup. <laughs> but at, at the end of the day, a good home performance for San Francisco. It's Jamal Adam, and it's wide. And you can see Ruben really not being bothered by that shot, clearly in command of his box. Or rather, that was Nicholas Brennis, I'm sorry. And as a stadium announcer, counts down the clock here at Negoesco Stadium. And San Francisco collects themselves. And after a tough start to the season, a home win in front of the supporters here in San Francisco will do them some good. San Jose State now 0-5, but they've got some really nice pieces. And for Simon Tobin, I'm sure he probably would have liked to be a little bit more competitive scoreline-wise. But at the same time, a win is a win. Two goals tonight for Ashish Chada, who had a yellow card and then withdrawn. And then at the end of the evening in the 87th minute, Georgie Ruiz with a goal so well taken this evening. Max Allen, he huffed and he puffed and he really got his team going, especially in the second half, picking up the ball, free kicks that he came close on a couple of times, the Liverpudlian, the junior, alongside Finley Wood, the Welshman, and the front three, Sanchez, Benfiel, Karami, and Nicholas Brennis, but again, the Don's just too much for the Spartans to handle. Well, if we can give uh, Leonard a bit of congratulations, he's only got 543 wins to go <laughs> to tie Steve Nicholasco. <laughs> No, that's all in fun, and that's a little respect to Steve Niguesco. Again, 544 wins over his many years here on the Hilltop. So Leonard Griffin picks up his first win as a head coach for the San Francisco Dons as the team comes over to hang out with fans, say hello. Take a few photos, maybe, maybe a selfie. I don't even know, but they're coming over and they're gonna salute the band in just a minute as well. Our next broadcast will be on Sunday against UNLV, the Rebels. Joe Dugan will be PM. Joe Dugan will be on the call with you, and I believe Pat Olson will be broadcasting the match with you on. Sunday evening, my friend. So enjoy. We'll, we'll miss you, but we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> yeah, enjoy that one. Congratulations again to Leonard Griffin, his first career victory as a head coach and victory at the helm of the San Francisco Dons. San Jose State, they've got a big break, and then they host UC Davis at home before they head into conference play just two, excuse me, a week, a week later in the very muddled whack conference as well. In San Francisco, they'll start their league play in the beginning of October. So time to grow for both of these two sides, but baby steps as my broadcast partner said. A shout out to everybody in the studio who's producing this broadcast for us, Wu Nguyen, uh, who is our director and producer. Appreciate, uh, appreciate everything that he does. Alexander in the control room, who is also our producer of this broadcast. To all of our camera people, thank you so much from the wonderful city by the bay, San Francisco. California from Negawesco Stadium, San Francisco 3, San Jose State nil. Good night. Have a great rest of your evening. We'll see you next time.